I want to first say that I think it's befitting that a Muslim, myself, who used to be a Christian, is going to talk about one of the great and illustrious prophets, Prophet Jesus, peace and blessing be upon him. I want to remind especially the Muslims who are here, who used to be Christian like myself, something that the Prophet said, peace and blessing be upon him. He said, Ida amana bi isa thumma amana bi falahu ajrani. Whoever believes in Jesus and then believes in me, Muhammad, will have a double reward. So for my immigrant brothers who were born Muslims, I have something over you. Before I get into the particulars about uh, Jesus, peace and blessing be upon him, let me give you um, some basic um, uh, foundation. All of my Christian friends who are here tonight, I want to say even before I begin that please do not be offended by anything that I say that might appear to you not worthy of the great personality of Jesus, peace and blessing be upon him. I'm letting you know from the beginning, I don't intend to do that. I don't think it would happen. But sometimes um, in our zeal to try to explain our faith, we may say something when other people might take it not in such a good way. So I want to let you know from the very beginning, I apologize if such a thing should happen. Let me first give you some background. Whenever God Almighty sends a prophet to the people, it means that something is wrong, not that it's something right. And usually when messengers come, they come in times of darkness and ignorance. And it is the job of that prophet to come to the people and take them out of ignorance and bring them to the light of God. According to one of our traditions, Allah the Almighty has sent on this earth 124,000 prophets. In the Arabic language, Nabi, prophet. In the plural, Anbiya, 124,000 prophets. And among these 124,000 prophets, 315 of them were special prophets called Rasul, or Rusul, which means messenger. 124,000 prophets, 315 messengers. And of the 124,000 prophets, 25 of them have been mentioned specifically in the Quran. Of the 124,000 prophets, 25 of them has been mentioned in the Quran. And of the 25 prophets that's mentioned in the Quran, five of them is mentioned in a very special way. The greatest, Noah, Noah, Ibrahim, Abraham, Musa, Moses, Isa, Jesus, and Muhammad. Allah mentions in the Quran as a Muslim, Amana Rasulu Bima Unzila Ilahi Mirabihi Wal Mu'minun Kulun Amana Billahi Wa Mala Ikatihi Wa Kutubihi Wa Rusuli. Muhammad believes in what was revealed to him, and so do the believers. All of them, every Muslim believes in God Almighty. Every Muslim believes in the angels, the last day. Every Muslim believes in the prophets and the books. Now, I want to say something tonight that is critical for us to understand as we move along, is that Jews, Christians, and Muslims have something in common. All of them are people of faith. They are people of faith. Jews who believe in the Torah 
and believe that the Torah was revealed by God Almighty or people of faith. Muslims believe in the Torah as the book of God. And he, Allah, revealed the Torah and the gospel. So as a Muslim, we must believe in the Torah. The Torah revealed to the great prophet Moses, peace and blessing be upon him. And what does Allah say about the Torah in the Quran? Fiha hudan wa nur. And in it, the Torah is guidance and light. So God revealed the Torah to Moses, and God Almighty Allah revealed the Injil or the Gospel to Jesus. And what does Allah say about the Injil, the Gospel? And in it is guidance and light. You can't get better than that. So what do Muslims believe in? Muslims believe that the Torah is the word of God, it's in the Quran, and the Muslims have a special relationship with Jews and Christians, and they are given a special name in the Quran, they're called Ahli Kitab, the people of the book. Why are they called the people of the book? Because Jews, true Jews, don't do anything unless they get the guidance from the Torah. Why? Because the Torah is from God Almighty. We believe that as Muslims. Christians are called Ahli Kitab. They're the people of the book. Why? Because they follow the book and they don't follow themselves. They follow the book that was given to their prophet, Prophet Jesus, peace and blessing be upon him. What do we have in common? We're people of faith. No Jew living today was on Mount Sinai, Sinai when God revealed the Torah to Moses. No Jew living today saw the great miracles of God as he took the people, the children of Israel, away from Pharaoh and saved the children of Israel. No Jew today saw the manna and the quails from heaven. None of them witnessed when the Jews were running from Pharaoh and Pharaoh was drowned in the, in the ocean. None was there, but they believe in it. Why? Because they're people of faith. And guess what? Muslims believe it too, because we are people of faith. We believe in Moses not because we witness one miracle of Moses, no. We believe in Moses as a prophet because the Quran says that Moses was a prophet. No Christian experienced or saw or witnessed the miracles of Jesus. Not one living today. But yet, Christians, out of faith, believe in their book because God Almighty talks about the miracles of Jesus in their book. But they're people of faith. And likewise, today, no Muslim witness, no Muslims witness the miracles of Moses or the miracles of Jesus. But yet, every Muslim believes in the miracles of Moses and the miracles of Jesus. Why? Because we witness them? No but because the Quran says it said it and we believe in it with people of faith. Before we proceed, let me give you one more point that I think is critical. In Islam, we can negotiate about many things, but there are some things that's non-negotiable, non-negotiable. And the one non-negotiable thing is absolutely God is wahid, God is one. There's no debate, there's no argument, and anyone who makes a partner with God Almighty, then they have violated the worst violation you can imagine. We can negotiate, we can argue about uh, entertainment. Muslims argue about music, to what degree we can participate in music. What music is permissible? What music is not permissible? We can negotiate about that. We can even negotiate to some degree how to pray, which direction to pray. Maybe I believe that that's the direction of Mecca, but someone comes and gives me another argument and turn me that way and thinking that that is the way to Mecca. We can negotiate about that. There are many things we can negotiate about, but the one thing we can never negotiate about 
and that is the absolute oneness of God. There's two things. There's al-khaliq, the creator, and makhluk, creation. Everything in the universe is a creation of God. Everything in the universe is a creation of God. And God is al awwal He's first and he's last. There was nothing before him. There's nothing after him. He's the creator. And everything else is creation. And because of that, we have this verse in Quran. I'm going to put it here because we're going to come back to it. I want you to remind me. أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ دَائِكَةُ الْمَوْتِ Every soul shall taste of death. Everything in creation must die. إِلَّا Allah, except Allah. Everything must die. Prophets live and prophets die. Angels live and angels die. In fact, we are taught in the end, the last one to be standing is the angel of death. And then Allah will order the angel of death to die. And everything ever been created will go out of existence. Allah except Allah. We can negotiate about a lot of things. But the one thing we can never negotiate about is the absolute oneness of God. And every prophet, 124,000 of them, all said the same thing. God is one. Do not associate gods with God. Now, let us talk about Prophet Jesus from an Islamic perspective. Allah mentioned in the Quran the similitude of Jesus before God is like the similitude of Adam. And God created Adam from dust and, say, and said, be, and Adam was. It is no accident that Adam is mentioned in the Quran 25 times. And Allah mentioned in the Quran, the similitude of Jesus with God is the similitude of Adam. God created Adam from dust. Let me stop. <laughs> Mankind, all of them are the children of Adam. And Adam was created from the dust. So wherever we are, wherever we come from, one thing we have in common tonight in this auditorium, all of us are human beings, and all of us come from our father Adam, and this is why in the Quran we're called the Bani Adam, the children of Adam, because Adam was the first man. I said that Adam is mentioned in the Quran how many times? 25 times. And I said Allah compares Jesus to who? Adam. And guess how many times Jesus is mentioned in the Quran? Exactly 25 times. So let me first give you a little bit of information, which is, which is important. How many of you heard of Reverend Al Sharpton? The minister, the Christian minister from, from Brooklyn, New York? You know, last year, Reverend Sharpton discovered something about his family lineage. And he found out that his name Sharpton, that he got from his great-grandfather, and his great-grandfather got his name Sharpton, not from his father, but he got his name from Alexander Sharpton. Who was Alexander Sharpton? Alexander Sharpton was the slave master of the great-grandfather, Reverend Sharpton. So we learn in slavery, black people who were enslaved, the slave master took away their name and gave them the slave master's name. But Allah said in the Quran, Udu'uhum li'aba'ihim, call them by their father's name. Every human being has a right to be called by the name of their fathers. In Islam, 
When a woman marries a man, she's not obligated to take on his name. Why? Because Allah said in Quran, call them by their father's name. If you look at Aisha radiallahu anha, the wife of Prophet Muhammad, she never became Aisha Abdullah. Muhammad, the messenger, was called Muhammad ibn Abdullah, his father Abdullah. He will always be Muhammad ibn Abdullah, Muhammad, the son of Abdullah. Aisha will always be bint Abi Bakr. She will be the daughter of her father, Abu Bakr. She never changed her name. She was Aisha Zaljatin Nabi. She was Aisha, the wife of the Prophet, but she never changed her name. But in this Western society, when a person put their name on you, it meant ownership. Now, 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 wait a minute. Those sisters who married to your husbands, you got their name. It's okay. He didn't mean ownership. But really, if you study Western history, you will find out that when women married men, she became, she became their property. And so that, that tradition has continued. So Allah says, call them by their father's name. And everyone is the, is, the, is the son and daughter of their father. And that's why this illicit relationship is crazy. Some people don't even know their father. Intimacy between men and women happen a hundred million times a day on this earth. A hundred million times a day on this earth. And it's rumored that a lot of it takes place in New York City. But that's just another issue. And as a result of that, 810,000 conceptions a day on this earth that results in 350,000 sexually transmitted diseases a day on this earth that results in 150,000 abortions every day on this earth. And there are a lot of men, girls and boys who don't even know their father. So call them by their father's name and every child has a right to know their daddy, have a right to know who their father is. Then if every person is called by the name of their father, how come? How come in the Quran it says Isa ibn Maryam? Isa ibn Maryam. Jesus, the son of Mary. All throughout the Quran, Jesus, the son of Mary. How come Jesus is not known by the name of his father? Because he had no father. And you are learning today, there are things in the Christian theology where Muslims agree 100%. I'm going to talk about those. And then you're going to find out that there are things that the Quran mentions, that the prophets' traditions mention, that's not even mentioned in the Bible. Miracles about Jesus that you didn't even know about, that Muslims know about. I'm going to talk about that. And then finally, we're going to talk about a few differences. Remember, tonight is not a debate. We're saying that this is Muslim's view of Jesus. This is an Islamic view of Jesus. It's a Quranic view. It's how the Muslims view Jesus according to the Quran. It's how the, Jesus, the Muslims view Jesus, peace and blessing be upon him, according to the traditions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. And some of you non-Muslims will be amazed at what's going to come out of my mouth in the next few moments. Jesus, the son of Mary. Now let me stop here and say this. What name on this earth is the most popular name? What name? There's no debate, no argument that the most popular name on this earth is Muhammad. And usually when you take on the name of someone, it's a, it's a badge of honor. You respect them, you, you, you love them, you honor them. Now. It is not surprising that among Muslims, there are Muslims who take on the name of Isa, Jesus, out of respect and love for Jesus. It's no different than Muslims taking on the name of Musa. How many of you know a Muslim with the name Musa? Musa means Moses. Moses is a great prophet. We love Moses. So Muslims take on the name. How many here tonight name Moses, Musa? 
All right. <laughs> Muslims take on the name of Abraham, Ibrahim, Khalilullah, the friend of God. Everywhere you see Muslims with those names. Now, I would argue that Khadija is a very popular name among Muslim women. True? Khadija is a very popular name, the name of the prophet's wife. Aisha is a popular name among Muslim women. True or not? I would argue that the name Miriam is as popular a name among Muslim women as any other name. Am I right? Miriam. How many here are named Miriam? Ah, ha, ha. Wait a minute. Raise your hand. One. Raise them up. Two. Three. So you see. Four. She, she just remembered. Now, what does that mean? It means that Muslims respect Miriam. The 19th chapter of the Quran is entitled Mary, Miriam. So there's no doubt about it. Muslims love and respect Jesus. They name their children after him. They name themselves after him. They name themselves after his righteous mother. And let me tell you what the prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said about, about Mary. He mentioned two perfect women. One of them, Asiya. Believe it or not, the wife of Pharaoh. Perfect woman. And the second one, Miriam, the mother of Jesus. Two perfect women. If the most popular name on earth is Muhammad, I'm going to ask you a second question. What name is most beloved to God? Is it Muhammad? It's not what the Prophet said. What name? Ahabu illallah. Most beloved to God. What name? Hmm? Abdullah. Abdullah means the servant of God. The most beloved name to God is Abdullah. Abdurrahman, the servant of the beneficent, the servant of God. Why? Because Abdullah, if you study the Quran, there's a verse what the French would call les d'etre, the very purpose of life. God said, I have not created spirits or human beings except to worship me. It is God's right to be worshipped by everybody, jinn, spirits, and human beings, to worship God. Who must worship God? Everybody, from the prophets on down. Because there's one thing that's non-negotiable in Islam, and that is God is one, and everyone must worship God the Almighty.